Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith with the uh, University of Ottawa Department of Geography Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. So in this particular video I'm going to talk about the Eemian uh, temperature and the uh, sea level um, rel relative to today. So um, it's based on the analysis of uh, in, in uh, Jim Hansen's um, recent landmark paper that came out this week with uh, six, 66 page document, 16 uh, co-authors. So the Eemian temperature, so this is about 130,000 years ago, between 130,000 and um, 118,000 years ago or so. The, the uh, temperature at that time as measured from um, oxygen isotopes in, in ice cores on both Greenland and Antarctica, for example. Um, we can get uh, temperature proxies, so, so the temperature at most in, the, in this Eemian period was one degree Celsius uh, warmer than today, or in other words, two degrees Celsius warmer than the pre-industrial temperature, because we're up um, from the pre-industrial today about uh, a degree Celsius. Um, now, some recent work uh, shows that the Eemian temperature may have only been uh, 0.2 or 0.3 degrees Celsius warmer than today. So we're getting very close to this particular um, state. Now the CO2 levels uh, during this period as measured from bubbles in the, in the ice cores, uh, the global CO2 levels were only at about 270 parts per million. So it's not an analog for today, but it does. That period does show how quickly uh, ice sheets can respond, and CO2 levels can change, and and uh, sea le and, and sea levels can rise. Um, so it's um, so, so it's not it's not, like I say it's not it's not a great analog. I mean, what the the changes that are occurring today are happening at least ten or twenty times faster than any changes in the in the paleo records. So how do we know what sea levels were like uh, during this period? Well, we basically, one of the methods is through uh, dating of uh, coral fossils. So as sea level is rising on a coastline, the coral reefs, um, they favor a certain depth of water. So as sea level is rising, the location where the reefs form starts moving um, inland um, to keep the uh, water depth at the favored level. So we can date the progression of these reefs and we can get an idea of how quickly um, sea level is rising. So we date the ages of the coral uh, using uh, uranium isotope uh, decay um, and also methods called uh, reef uh, backstepping. So what these um, records indicate is that the sea levels um, at the beginning of the Eemian were three to four meters above today's levels. And then um, that was in the early Eemian. And then in the late Eemian, the sea levels were uh, by as high as five to nine meters above present day sea level. And in between, in the middle of the Eemian, um, the sea levels dropped down to about today's level. So there was a rise and then a drop down and then a bigger rise. And the bigger rise was five to nine meters. And the rate of sea level rise uh, was something of the order of a meter per century was common. Although there were exceptions to that where the rise was much faster. So um, in order to measure sea level rise, it's important to know what the land is doing, because there's such a thing called uh, glacio-isostatic rebound. So on coastlines where there's large ice sheets that have formed or, um, or melted, that the weight of the ice pushes down the land, and then when the ice, so, so if you have three kilometers of ice sitting on North America, for example, it depresses the bedrock about a kilometer, and then as the ice leaves, then the bedrock will rise up with a, with, a, with a long response time. So a lot of coastlines, for example, in North America are still rising because the ice left, you know, 10,000 years ago, some, some was around 8,000 years ago, but there's still this isostatic rebound. 
So this needs to be considered. So this is why regions like the Bahamas and Bermuda have very good um, records on sea level rise because the glacier, the GIA, the, the glacio isostatic re, um, adjustment is, is minimal. Um, so the coastlines do indicate um, the actual sea level change. Um, so, so these reefs, um, uh, so, so there's many locations around the world where we can get the sea level from the Eemian. And basically that trend holds, you know, three or four meters above today's level um, in the early Eemian and five to nine in the later Eemian. Um, now, in the uh, Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, there were um, using um, the uranium radioactive decay, we can get a date for when the for when the sea level was like we can date the the fossil corals to see where sea level was, um, but the resolution is not so high. So combining the uranium radioactive decay with um, with reef backstepping um, on the in the Yucatan Peninsula at many different sites, uh, recent work has shown that. Uh, the sea level actually jumped by two to three meters, um, which is termed an ecological period in the Hansen paper, uh, within several decades. And this happened about um, 121,000 years ago. Um, and uh, so, so this is a very significant finding. Um, and what this seems to indicate is that um, the you know, it's believed. Okay, well, first of all, um, the at the end of the Eemian, when this occurred, um, shortly after this time period, there was a rapid cooling, um, and uh, as we left the in interglacial period, and and um, this um, th this has also been confirmed at many sites. For example, there's a hundred well-dated ura um, uranium series coral reefs um, at 28 different sites along the 1400 kilometer west coast of Australia um, where, where uh, we, we have these records. But in Australia there is some gla glacial, some isostatic uh, rebound. There is some, some movement up and down so, so that's corrected for. But the uh, the, the orbital forcing um, which caused the Eemian to be a warm period um, is much slower and much weaker um, than, like it gets the process moving and then you start getting ice melt and you start getting albedo changes and then you start getting changes in the southern ocean in how much CO2 is being absorbed in the ocean and so that controls the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere and that's the, the knob, if you like, for temperature. So, so these factors um, all, so the, the Eemian of course was, was a naturally, you know, a naturally occurring climate cycle because of these, because of the orbital changes of the earth and then it was amplified by the, these, these different feedbacks. So um, the rates at which things were happening back then um, cannot be extended to say that these are the rates that things will happen now because now we've got much higher greenhouse gases um, and the rates are rising much faster, um, like I said. But in terms of the actual uh, sea level rise um, towards the, it's believed that that extra high, you know, plus nine meters or so sea level rise above today's value at the end of the Eemian were likely due to changes in the Southern Ocean. Were likely due to um, large, um, ice um, loss in Antarctica on these, um, on these um, re re retroactive or retrogressive slopes. So the ice on Antarctica as shown in many recent studies today, um, it looks like it's, the melting is a very highly nonlinear process. So it looks like, you know, if indeed the sea level rose two to three meters in a few decades, um, back at the time of the late Eemian, then there's, there's no reason to believe that this type of event or rates of change of sea level could not happen today. Um, so so this is, this is uh, the, the key point that the, 
this last interglacial period was not much warmer than today, perhaps only 0 0.2, 0 0.3 degrees Celsius warmer today than today, and the sea levels were up to nine meters higher, and the rate of sea level change um, was possibly as high as two to three meters within several decades. So this shows again that the two degrees Celsius threshold above pre-industrial is an extremely risky, uh, probably extremely dangerous target to be aiming for. We really need to look at the radiative balance of energy on the earth and reduce that to zero to um, arrest the, the warming. Um, now not only was sea level um, much higher in the late Eemian, this nine meters, but it looks like the storm activity was enormous and I'll discuss that in the, in the uh, next um, video. Thank you.